We are a geo-compliance company, probably what I would call the second entrance into the uh, domestic market in the United States. And it's been quite an adventure, you know, since I joined in about 2022. I'm sure those conversations with lawmakers about DFS must have been interesting explaining to them how that's not sports betting and it's just fun and games. Um, but yeah, game of skill. That. Game of skill. We said game of skill. <laughs> you know, it's important how the geolocation integrates with the actual, you know, platform and stuff like that. But you're right. You're, they're always working on trying to make that as seamless as possible. That could be a little less painful. <laughs> but yeah, I understood why it's done. Thank you for that. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Sports Betting Conversations. Today, we're joined by Edward Bedrosian, Chief Regulatory and Compliance Officer at X Point Tech. I think I got that right. Edward, welcome. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Well, th thank you, guys. Um, it's, uh, it's nice to be here. So I am, as you said, I'm the Chief Regulatory Officer at a company called X Point Services, LLC. We are a geo-compliance company, probably what I would call the second entrance into the uh, domestic market in the United States. Um, my background is, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to go way back and try and make it quick. Um, uh, after I got out of law school in D.C. in the early 90s, I became a prosecutor in Massachusetts. And I was a prosecutor for about 16 years um, in a local uh, DA's office. And then I went to the attorney general's office with, with my uh, with my boss, became the attorney general. Um, and I go back that far because it also implicates my um, introduction into gaming. In the, in the late, like, 2009, 2010, Massachusetts, where I am from and sitting just outside of Boston now, um, was in the process of legalizing gambling. Um, and it was a, it, like, like it is in most states that, that think about legalizing. This was casinos back then. Um, it was a very controversial subject. Um, in my role as I was in senior staff in, in the attorney general's office, I uh, was assigned to work with the legislature to develop a robust um, legalization uh, gaming law, uh, which was eventually passed in 2010, uh, which created a gaming commission and um, gave the attorney general, governor, and one other constitutional officer picks for the commission, um, had a strong, given my background, the attorney general's background, had a strong law enforcement uh, presence in, in the gaming commission. Um, so that was sort of my introduction. Um, and as I helped the legislature, uh, we and me and a couple other folks, the attorney general's office, talked to a bunch of states, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, with legalized uh, casinos and tried to figure out best practices. Um, interestingly, um, I left the attorney general's office, went to a law firm, New York law firm and private practice, this law firm at the time. Um, I was working in the attorney general space, but they represented small companies back then called FanDuel and DraftKings um, as they were DFS companies. And we worked um, with those companies to explain to the attorney generals uh, back then what DFS was and what it wasn't back then. Um, so that was an interesting couple of years. Um, and then uh, a long road, road uh, I was contacted by the new gaming commission who had started who needed someone to help them run staff. Um, and I had known a bunch of the commissioners because I had been involved in helping pick them after the law was passed. Um, so I went and became the executive director of the Gaming Commission in Massachusetts from about 2015, 2020. We opened three casinos in Massachusetts when I was there. So that was really when I started to learn um, about the, the gaming business, um, casino companies, the the regulatory environment. Um, I, after we opened the casinos, I went back to that law firm and did gaming regulatory work for a couple of years, and then I had this unique opportunity to come to X Point, and I will tell you that the thing that really drew me to X Point was that as I looked at, um, you know, this was in 2022, so let's see, so. So the sports betting had been about three years or so. Um, when, when I looked at the the, um, 
the tech stack that is sports betting, right? And you think about platform providers, KYC, payment providers, all those. In all those spaces, there were many, many um, entrants. There was duplication. There was redundancy. Only in the geolocation space was there one basically monopoly player. And, and based on my experience of you know working with casinos, it would never give a floor to one slot provider, right? I said, this is this is an opportunity. This is a little, little um, I say crazy, but not right that there's only one provider. Um, so I joined a very small um, startup with, with founders who had the same idea, right? I give them credit. Um, and it's been quite an adventure, you know, since I joined in about 2022. So I'm, that's a that's uh, probably more than you wanted to know. I mean, that, that's all, I think, uh, great background information and sounds like you've had a pretty exciting career. Um, I'm sure those conversations with lawmakers about DFS must have been interesting, explaining to them how that's not sports betting and it's just fun and games. Um, but yeah, Game of skill. That. Game of skill. We said game of skill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> skill-based games so um coming uh back to kind of the present um yep. and uh i mean great, great insight you know kind of looking at where the market was uh you know specifically at, at the tech stack and as you said you know kevin and i we we know many people in, in the industry we've been to many conferences and you do see a duplication of uh, you know, platforms for like, you know, CRM, like you said, or, or K KYC. And, um, but yeah, there was only that only one company kind of focused on uh, sure. geolocation. And, um, um, you know, that, that area of the floor was kind of, you know, bare as, aside from, from them. So, you know, kudos to you for finding that, that opportunity. Um, can, and I know some, some things like might, might be, um, confidential, but uh, can you talk about um, kind of some of the initial inroads that you took to kind of create that space for you? Because you know, once yeah. somebody is there, it's kind of hard to you know start pushing them yeah. out of the way. No, I think, yeah, yeah, right. There, there were a lot. So you know, I think we found an environment where you know there was that sort of monopoly player. And people were wedded to them, right? Almost initially cautious about even having conversations with us. Um, and the other thing, you know, I had to put my sort of former regulator hat on. You know, we were a new company with not many licenses, right? State license, vendor licenses, stuff like that. So I literally um, hired a licensing manager and spent, you know, years just cranking out license applications for states. And then as we got more license applications and more approvals or temporary approvals, we started to have, I'd say, more, um, you know, honest, not honest conversations, but just conversations. People were a little more receptive. We also, um, uh, there was some litigation involved. You know, we had a customer who went live in New Jersey and uh, the Monopoly player initially sued us for a patent violation. Um, that case was dismissed thanks to, I think, in part, our great lawyers at Covington. If everyone wants a referral, just let me know. Pitch, pitch, right? Um, uh, and uh, the Monopoly player's uh, patent was invalidated. That case is now up in appeal in, in the Federal Court of Appeals in, in D.C. Um, we are still confident in our position. Um, but I think those things sort of cracked a little bit that uh, view that there was only this monopoly player. And look, um, I, the rest of the industry, I recognized that um, as much as they might have, you know, depended upon monopoly player and or even like them in any industry, uh, monopolies are great, right? They don't, they're not great for pricing and they're not, they don't. Uh, push an incentive for developing new technologies or 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 innovation. So um, that's what we try to you know be a little bit of a disruptor and move those conversations along. Um, these days, I think we're having very you know wholesome, honest conversations with just just about everyone. You know, we're we're licensed in I think twenty states, pretty much all the states 
we can be licensed in without, you know, there are some smaller states where you have to have an operator partner um, that, you know, hopefully we'll get to in the future. So um, that's where we are now. That's a, okay. that's a fun role, you know, as a disruptor, right. To, to come into a market, it's kind of exciting. You know, when you, when you get in that, what it, I think interests us most in your company besides you, um, is, you know, how innovative you are, you know, we're a ten- technology company, you know, that differential that you guys offer, can you even touch on that a little bit? Like what's your big differential yeah, yes. when you come into the market, like being nimble, maybe price, but maybe the, what's the technology that makes you guys a little bit Yeah, right. Different? I think, well, it's interesting you use that term nimble, right? So yeah. um, the, the thing, one of the things we offer, right, is we're um, developing our technology. I think we have a extremely good uh, base technology, but as we, um, engage customers, um, new customers, we say to them, what would you want if you could have, you know, something um, from a geolocation uh, provider? What what type of things would you want? And we're we're getting suggestions from, from customers that help us be nimble and think about how we're going to develop our um, technology. We also, uh, believe it or not, and, and I was not a technology guy, so I didn't appreciate this, but, you know, how easily or not, you know, technologies work together is is important, right? So uh, we think we've developed a technology that can integrate um, very easily into existing platform providers. So it's 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 not a a, a long process. We can do it relatively quickly, and um, there's a lot of advantage to that. Yeah, and. Um... What's what's interesting to me, what I just learned, I, I didn't know you had to get approved in each state. So um, that's a so yeah, we're we're think layer. of it think yeah. of it this way, right? Yeah. Think about it this way. You know, we are um, in in so did, let, let's be clear. So did the you know the monopoly play? So so did everyone who wants to provide this, right? You have to go yeah. through licensing, which was for a former regulator was was really eye opening right because i had been on the other side where um you know and i had worked with the brick and mortar casinos who were pretty much used to that type of licensing the the challenge i saw and now sort of appreciate is when the industry went from a brick and mortar environment to a mobile environment they took that brick and mortar licensing and just said here you go um, you know, I, I could make an argument that, gee, these fast technology companies aren't necessarily equal to the brick and mortar casino companies where you have dealers, pit bosses, money counters, all those types of things. But I understand as a, as a regulator, you want to get the mobile market going, you take what you know, and you um, apply it. Uh, so having said it, you know, these are um, having had to file these myself, 67 page applications um, that ask you just about everything, you know, financial data, um, you know, your associations, your criminal record, all those types of things. Um, and if you have seven or eight filers in your company, it's, it's quite an undertaking. Um, but, um, you know, Good news, bad news. I think the industry where people in the industry would say it's one of those things that it's a it's a um, it's a significant undertaking. But, you know, it's a classic for those people who've gone to business school, what they call a barrier to entry. Right. You know, once you're inside the walls, um, you know, someone else who wants to come in, thinks it's easy, has to go through the same process. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like, you know, quite a tremendous effort there. And uh, yeah, in, in regards to you know monopoly specifically in, in, in this in this business, I mean, like as you said, it it it, it doesn't um, drive in, in innovation. You know, pricing is an issue, but also tremendous risk for for clients as well. Well, the, the, you know, very good point, right? It's most places in the tech stack has redundancy. Right. If you yeah. if you have you have you have two or three payment processors, if one of your payment processors go down, boom. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. So that's right. So if if uh, geolocation goes down, 
you're you're done. You're down, right? You're not you're not taking any bets. So it's very it is a very important um, uh, technology. Yeah, yeah, I mean, looking at what happened with CrowdStrike recently, and not that they're a monopoly, yeah. Yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, look at the the, the level of uh, disruption right that, that occurred all across the world just because of that. Man, un- yeah, that was unbelievable. Yeah, or if no, you were trying you're, to buy a car to... a month ago when, they, when the back end of the uh, the auto one went back went down. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so you, you know, you talk about the the you know the the technology. What now? You're focused purely on gaming. Is there any ancillary business to what you're doing? Uh, you know, with your yeah, technology. So, th- so there are there are companies who are in the retail space who do you know a lot. They can use geolocation. Um, there are a lot of, uh, of of different purposes for it. We're focused. We want to be the best we can in the gaming space. We want to focus on that space. So. So we really service, um, I'd say, a continuum of companies, right? From, I'd say, over here being the sports betting, eye gaming client um, with very prescriptive regulations, to um, DFS in somewhere in the middle, um, which is you know what I would call semi-regulated. There are some states that regulate it um, in the same in the same way or somewhat similar to uh, sports betting and and there are some states who don't really regulate at all and then over here um there are a lot of sweepstakes of companies now um who are looking for geolocation providers um to help them um comply you know to figure out what states they're in make sure they're uh, um, the players are within those states and it also helps them um with their payment processors to have that type of uh verification yeah, what's interesting as a you know, I, I dabble in different sports apps, and what's interesting to me is like how geolocation occurs when you go from state to state where sports betting is legal. So I'm in New York now. I travel to Massachusetts a fair amount, and like some apps do well where it's like instant. Other apps like still require you to open up new accounts. And sometimes it recognizes where you are. Sometimes automatically. Yeah. Sometimes so you, to, you know, you make yeah. a good you make a good point. That's why I talk about that sort of integration. Mm-hmm. You know, it's important how the geolocation integrates with the actual you know platform and stuff like that. And you know, look, the goal is our goal is that the customer doesn't even know it's there. Really, right? You exist in the right. background, right? You you right. really um, unless they uh, you've probably gotten an error message saying you're out of, you know, you're either out of, uh, of legal jurisdiction and, or, you know, if you happen to have zoom running or something like that, they'll say, turn off zoom or you can't be on a VPN or stuff like that. The, the um, VPN always the, gets me. <laughs> well, cause I'm always trying to be, that. I'm trying yeah, to be exactly. in Boston all the time. So I can watch sports. <laughs> so, so um, yeah. So the, the goal is, that uh, you know this type of technology exists in the background, and you don't want to you know impede that customer experience. But the flip side, um, you know, the companies have to have compliance, right? They have to make sure the the end user is in a legal spot and within some states who might have like tribal exclusions or other exclusion zones. They're not in you know one of those prohibited zones either. Yeah, yeah. I mean that part completely understood but it would be nice when i'm traveling between legal yeah. sports betting states when i log into the app like i said it, i don't all i see is my account i don't have to go through a bunch of steps right. to right to right. log right. in and yeah yeah well so let me defend uh you know maybe or my either current customer future customers they need to make sure they're registering you in the right state right as you go it may be the same operator but now they're paying taxes and or complying with slightly different rules as you travel through connecticut uh rhode island into massachusetts so yeah um, a little 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 bit of a yeah but you're right you're, they're always working on trying to make that as seamless as possible that could be a little less painful but, <laughs> but yeah i understood why it's done thank you for that but right. didn't um, your you know what i read about your trust mode 
you know, that you made the the announcement. Isn't that one of your kind yeah. of differentials? And is that in that area as well? You know, yeah, well, what we're what lessen... we're thinking about, yeah, what we're thinking about and talking about is um when um someone is on a what we call a trusted source, which could be your home Wi-Fi, but you happen to live close to a border, right? So right. Uh, in general, if you live close to a border, you travel close to a border, you're going to be checked more often, right? Because they don't want you to get over the border, right? So that's, you know, you talked about that user experience. All of a sudden, your phone's like being checked, being checked, being checked. And, and quite frankly, we actually have some employees who live in New York City who just by virtue of living in New York City um, are checked more often than someone would be upstate because you're so you're so close to borders. So what we're trying to do is say, okay, we that's fully appropriate, but if you happen to be on your home Wi-Fi sitting there doing nothing other than you know sports betting, just by virtue of where you live, you should be treated like anyone else on a we call it a static trusted source, whether you could be upstate or downstate, whatever it is, let's let's treat them the same. So we're talking to regulators about that because they have um I don't want to say strict requirements. They do have requirements about people living within a mile of a border. And so we're in, and they, I, you know, most of the regulators we talk to say that makes total sense, but you know, do we have to change something in the regulations to, to allow that? So, and, and interestingly, um, that's, that's not necessarily in our financial interest because sometimes we get paid, you know, there are different models, how to get paid, Getting checked might be in our financial interest, but if we're developing a technology that checks you less, you know, while it's not in our financial interest, we say the bigger picture is it's a better customer experience and it's better for our customer, the operator. So, um, so that is, Kevin, that's a good point. Some, something we're working on. The value add. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and right. just... You know, look, innovation, right? Just think yeah, about exactly. things slightly innovation differently, value right? Is what that's yeah. going back to that differential, right? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, you know, Howard, this has been great. I mean, we really appreciate your time. Do you have any parting thoughts or kind of forward-looking uh, comments that you can make <laughs> on the industry? Yeah, no. Look, I uh, think yeah. I think. Um, it's been for from my personal view, it's been a heck of a of a two years if someone had said to me at my age, which I'm not going to necessarily disclose, but Kevin probably knows because he's within a couple months or so, um, <laughs> that I would be in a, be in a startup, right? With all the typical, you know, challenges of, you know, getting funding and um uh, you know, having people um, all over the world for our technology staff and, um, you know, working remotely, um, I would say you're crazy. It's been a, a tremendous couple years. Um, you know, there are hills and valleys in any startup, um, but I think we've done a really good job at opening up this market. And now there are other entrants who want to come in. And I think that's a testament to what we did. And I hope in in the long run, um, that it will benefit the market um, and and make it, um, you know, as, as you said before, um, just to make sure there's redundancy in the market, there's innovation, um, there's pricing, all those things. Um, but it's been been a heck of a ride. And I think it's only getting to get more interesting. Yeah, that's where it's heading for sure. Yeah, full full disclosure, uh, you know, I, I actually know how old that is. You know, he was a, uh, his sports career goes back to our high school days. I uh, played uh hockey with ed and he was a stellar goalie uh well, yelling at we, me to back played, check for years we, 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 we played long before high school together we played all yeah we played on the ponds days. yeah yeah, yeah exactly hockey. exactly when ponds that's, used to that's, freeze <laughs> that's that's and that's where i that's where i think i peaked in pond hockey i think i really peaked right but i but our parents <laughs> were on the side betting on us you know, so that, that's where the yeah, whole right, sports yeah. betting. Right? Yeah. There you go. That's how many will Ed stop? <laughs> yeah, that's where it all right. starts. It all starts. Everything right. starts that's on right. the bonds. Yeah. That's right. There you go. There you go. Well, it was great. Uh, guys, thank yeah. you very much. I really yeah. appreciate the conversation. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thanks. Great.